Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening video. So if you saw, mom and I just took a 21 day European cruise. I vlogged the entire thing, but as amazing as that trip was, when we came back, my garden was in a state of shambles, shall we say. It did okay, but it's not quite established. This is only its second year. And so a lot of things, especially the annuals, were kind of long and leggy and not so great after not being fertilized or deadheaded for an entire month and a half. Not to mention the weeds, y'all, the weeds. So while I did a tour and I did a cleanup of all of that, a lot of my annuals, and I knew this would happen taking a cruise so late in the season, a lot of my annuals just didn't make it. That's fine. We just pulled those out. The ones that are still limping along, we'll let limp along a little longer here in Alabama. I can plant fall annuals now, or I can wait and I can plant them up until mid-November, really. So I've got just two flats of pansies, six mums, and um, five flowering purple cabbages. We're going to plant some of these in the landscape, the cabbages and the pansies, and the mums are going to go in containers. So I figured I'd bring y'all along. We are going to go ahead and plant them. The flowering cabbages get 12 to 18 tall and 12 to 15 wide. So I'm going to plant three here where I normally like to put my foxglove in the spring. In Alabama, these will survive as long as we don't go below 10. So they will get big and bushy and beautiful all fall. And then they will continue to have color through till spring. And so I will take them out in the spring when it's finally time to plant my foxgloves. You, you saw mom and I got some of the F1 Camelot box gloves that are supposed to bloom their first year. We planted them in milk jugs down by the shed. So we're going to hope that they're going to grow big and strong into baby plants that I can plant out in the garden next spring. So by the time those are ready to go in, the flowering cabbages will be ready to go out. And then I'm going to underplant them up front here with the pansies. So I've got blue pansies. And I've got a flat of like mauve colored burgundy almost pansies. Um, and we're going to do some here, a few up here, and a few by the porch. I'm not doing an entire fall garden. I don't have the time or the money. But what I like to do is just add a little bit of color that will stay. The pansies will stay pretty all winter, all spring long until it starts to get hot here. They won't bloom in the coldest parts of the month, but they will stay green and they'll bloom sporadically when the cold weather kind of goes down a bit. So they'll bloom all fall and all spring specifically. And that's what I'm looking for is that spring color and a little bit of fall, just so that when I'm coming home in the winter, my entire garden doesn't look dead. So I just like to plant at the very least this front part. That way when I'm carrying in groceries, I'm coming home from a project or an errand, I just see a little, little bits of joy in the garden. So we're going to try to get this knocked out quick today because kind of running out of gardening days. Girl needs to be working on Christmas content. Got resin and cricket projects for days. So the, uh, the flowering cabbages, I have to lay out 15 inches apart and the pansies um, say 10 to 12 inches, but mom says six. So we're gonna go do six on the pansies. And I literally paid $20 for this whole flat so we could do that. We'll see. I want to see how far the pansies go because they were on sale 20 bucks at my local nursery. So if I need another flat, I can pop over and grab it before they're all gone. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to plant the cabbages and the pansies here first, and then we'll move along. I'm excited. Probably need a kneeler. Okay, grab a kneeler. I'll be right back. All right, y'all, I have all the pansies in. I'm gonna give you a close up so you can see for the mauve, maroon, burgundy color here. I haven't cut them back or watered them yet because I just wanted to show you kind of 
an idea of what it will look like. Obviously, these plants will get bigger and fuller towards spring, but they're very pretty blooming even spread out a little bit. They're about six inches apart. This bed is harder to plant in because of the tree roots. Sometimes you gotta fudge six inches a little here or there, but close enough for government work. I did go ahead and cut and water the blue ones, so I'll walk you down there and show you, but we've got pansies here, and they kind of wind wider, thinner, and then wider down here. My sad zinnias, they look ridiculous, but the butterflies are still loving them. So I'm gonna leave them until next month and then I'll pull them out. And I think I'm gonna put some of the smaller ornamental cabbages, unlike the big flowering cabbages that get 18. You can get some of the smaller ones. I think I'm gonna put a little row of those here, right in front of these agapanthus, cause those will come up blue next spring and summer. And then I do have some bulbs to plant, alliums and more iris for the back of the bed. And of course the fox love, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we've done down here. I still have to do my mums up on the porch, although we did the mums and the planters down by the bench. And I have half of my blue flat left. So after lunch, we're going to go ahead. I hate to do it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the big uh, from next to the cabbage across from the door where I want the other blue ones. And we're gonna go ahead and plant that up because I don't want those pansies to have to sit in their flat until next month. So go ahead and get them in the ground and sacrifice the vinca since they look a little sad anyways. These vinca look great, we'll eat those. And then next month we'll pull these vinca and these zinnias when they're more dead and replace them with some fall color. You don't have to do it all at once. Of course, the things plant first will last longer, they'll get bigger, but they, they also have to deal with, you know, helicopters are flying. All those cold weather months, they get a little stringier. It's not like in the summer when they get big and bushy and beautiful the whole time, so. I'm pretty excited for next spring though with the pansies. I've got some snapdragons growing that I can put up at first spring. Fox gloves I can put out first spring. Lupin I can put out at first spring. My wisteria plant is doing fantastic. So we should have a whole pretty spring mix in this bed. But the, the pansies and the cabbage and the mom can give us a little bit of color all fall and winter. So give me a minute. I'll show you what we've done and then after lunch we'll kick it in high gear and finish up. All right, so you can see the full swath of the maroon or the mauve burgundy pansies here. That's going to be really pretty once it fills in and it's right next to my carport so be able to see it. Got the white mums down there. These zinnias, y'all, they crack me up. And then here is the the star of the show. So you can see I cut back all the blue pansies in this little bed, just gave them a haircut across the top and then planted the cabbage back here. So I'm going to go back in there where the dirt is settled a little bit and just make sure everything's rough. And then I think right behind these lambs here in front of those Nandina, I'm going to plant a whole swath of irises. You can see one iris bulb there. I didn't have, I have five or 10 more for this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go fill that in. That'll be real pretty back there, but here you go. So this was three, six pieces. So the, the blue flats have six little plugs in each container. The burgundy had four. So this was three. I have um, seven left. So we're gonna come over here and right next to these cabbage, I'm plant these two cabbages right here, and then a whole swath of the blue pansies from this hytrandra over to the cabbage. So that'll be pretty. We'll just have to sacrifice those vinca, but I had a whole little group of salvia here that kind of died back already. And you can see behind the cabbage, there was salvia there that died back already. So the vinca on this side just it looked pretty when it was in between those things, but now it looks kind of out of place. So it's 
much as I hate to pull them, I think we might try to dig them up in one big clump and put them over here, fill in this hole. Don't think they'll make it, but it's either that or throw them in the trash, so might as well give them a fighting chance for another month. If they don't make it, got to pull them out next month anyways. All right, lunch. All right, y'all, I'm a giant mess, but I'm all done with my fall planting for October. I do still want to plant two areas with either violas or pansies or small cabbages in November, but I will show you everything I got done yesterday uh, before and after lunch. This is my favorite view. You only see the pretty parts, so you can see right down here where we started to wrap those mauve burgundy pansies. They go here and they get skinny and then they get wide and they go all around up through here. So these zinnias really need to be pulled out. Like I said, I'm definitely not planting these here next year, but the butterflies are still just on them all the time. So I'm going to leave them until next month when they die. And then I want to plant just in front of these agapanthus with either a few little violas or maybe some small cabbages just right up front here. Um, I think that would be really pretty. But we're going to let this mess of zinnias peter out first. So then you can see we've done some different things here. We have our blue pansies and our three cabbage. I did move my pintos. No, these are in pots and they just have a little bit of irrigation pop to them because I wasn't sure if I was going to plant them this year. Or not. It all depended on whether the super tunias that were in front of them needed the space. They didn't, so I just left them in the pots. But I moved them because look at these mums I found. Oh my goodness. So I have been looking for pinkish mums and I found these last night when I was grocery shopping. So before I could finish this video, I had to plant those. I had planted mums here last year, but the problem was so mums in our area. We'll come back. You can see slight purple down here. That's one of my mums from last year. But you really need to plant them out right after they've finished blooming in your pots. So like next month, the month after, before the ground gets too cold, after these have stopped blooming, I will plant them in the landscape. But last year, I just left them all winter to overwinter in their pots of death. And then in the spring, I cut them back and planted them out. And of my six potted mums, three survived, but the two here didn't. And I, I just couldn't pass these up. So I bought these next month when these vinca, the pretty ones and our experimental ones, some look okay, some don't. When they peter out, I will fill this front area with either some pansies or violas or cabbage. I'm thinking violas here. Last but not least, we have our little spot here, you can see I did pulled all those vinca I planted. This is all those light blue pansies. And so they come right all the way under this hydrangea in front of the lamb's ear, around the cabbage, and then they go through the cone flowers and up to the lamb's ear. So the lamb's ear will stay kind of green. Um, cabbage will stay green, the cone flowers and the pentas will die back to the ground. So this will still give us a beautiful color all throughout the fall. And that was the goal. And then of course, my pretty white mums. I love them in these cages. I know that's silly, but I just do. So that's it. That is everything I planted in October. I think the entire garden looks 
so pretty. I'm going to leave you with my favorite shot of the day, which is right over here. Bum, 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 bum. Beautiful, darling. I'll see you next month. Bye.